it's always good to get out of the house. Even better, to get out of town altogether and spend the day in the great outdoors. But whether you're on the beach or in the woods, you're sure to be walking through someone else's home because everywhere you go is a different habitat. This unit looks at habitats, the places where groups of plants and animals live. Also, how habitats together with their communities of plants and animals form ecosystems. And how plants and animals adapt to their environment. A rock pool is home to many plants and animals. It's their habitat. This rock pool and its community of rock pool plants and animals together form an ecosystem. An ecosystem can be as small as a drop of rainwater on a leaf or as large as an ocean. On any seashore, there are many different habitats, places where organisms live. Cliffs and sand dunes are two very different habitats. In woodland too, there are all kinds of different habitats and ecosystems, both large and small. Like the inside of this rotted log. The tree canopy. Or in the leaf litter. All these habitats and the community of living organisms that live in them interact together to form various ecosystems. These ecosystems are not isolated. They are all interlinked and can be part of a larger ecosystem, such as this woodland ecosystem. So a bird living in the tree canopy might eat a woodlouse in the rotten log or a worm in the leaf litter. In order to survive in any habitat, an animal must be able to get food, water and shelter. A plant needs space to grow, sunlight and water. To live successfully in a habitat, living things must have adapted to that particular habitat. Shore crabs have changed over many generations to survive on the seashore. Unlike other crabs that live on the sea floor, they are able to breathe above and below water. They also have strong legs that allow them to scamper over the rocks. This kind of change is known as adaptation. Not all habitats or ecosystems are as easy to study as rock pools. Deep down under the waves, the seabed is home to other creatures that have also adapted in special ways to live in that habitat. This octopus has adapted the ability to camouflage itself, to make itself difficult to be seen by other creatures who might fancy it for lunch. The octopus is able to change its colouring and patterns of colouring to blend in with its surroundings. This sandy beach may not be the easiest place to live, but it's not as harsh as a desert. Deserts are the driest places on Earth. Some may have no rain at all for several years, and most deserts are extremely hot. A few species of plants and animals have adapted ingenious ways of coping with very harsh conditions, with heat and lack of water. Because precious water is lost through leaves, cacti don't have any foliage, just spines, which also prevent them from being eaten. 
cacti store water in their thick, fleshy stems. A camel can also store water. It can drink up to 114 litres of water at a time and can survive drought for weeks. The sidewinder snake moves sideways rather than forwards because in this way only two parts of the snake's body touch the hot surface of the sand at any one time. These are all examples of adaptation to a harsh environment. Even here in Britain, when the weather gets colder, some animals take cover. They hibernate like these dormice. They have adapted to the shortage of food over the winter by staying in bed. They slow down their metabolism and go to sleep for months in order to conserve energy. This kind of adaptation has contributed to the huge variety of wildlife that exists in our world today.